Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jeremiah. I just wanted to take a quick minute to shoot a video to uh, encourage you, just to help to pump you up, to get you excited, to get you hopeful, to get you refocused and, uh, you know, fixed back on the Word of God. So this morning as I was having my prayer time and study time, you know, a thought came to me that a lot of the reason people have a hard time, like receiving or walking in the things that the Bible says you can have. It isn't because they don't have, you know, belief for what they hear. Uh, it's not that they don't have the faith for what they hear. Sometimes they don't have good teaching to help carve out what they're hearing, to help establish what, what's supposed to happen. Because let me, let me just break it down for you. So from the Word of God, it says, How will people know... A certain thing about God, about his word. How are they going to know without a preacher? How are they supposed to know something that they've never heard before? And so that that's the whole thing is, you know, as teachers, myself being a teacher and a minister, like it's our responsibility to take time to not just chuck something out there and hope that you figure it out. It's like our responsibility not to just say, okay, well, here's a word. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. Goodbye. The whole reason that Jesus talks about teachers in the word, preachers in the word, is we're responsible for helping to be the ones to share the word of God, to make sure you understand it. So that way, when you go to do your faith walk on it, you go to do your believing of the word of God, you have a full and clear understanding. Now, why did I have it in my heart to bring this up this morning? So the one thing that I, I was going over was Psalm 23. And the very first verse of Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, the way that the NASB that I read out of says it is, I will not be in need. Now, that's the whole thing is the Lord himself. He's a shepherd. The Lord as a shepherd is supposed to make sure you're provided for, that you're safe, that you are protected, you know, and all these different aspects. But when it comes to the shepherd of the flock of the body of Christ, the teachers, the preachers, ministers, we're supposed to take time to make sure we are shepherding those who listen to us. We're taking time to break things down, make it palatable, not that we make it acceptable to you, because some people just still won't jive with what you're saying. But what I mean is I'm supposed to make sure that if I'm giving you a word or I'm giving you a concept or I'm sharing a topic out of the Bible, that I not only give you verses out of the Bible, but help to break down understanding. And that's the whole goal of being Christ-like. Jesus didn't just throw things out there. And, you know, because Jesus, you have to think, he is the word made flesh. He knew the word in and out. He was the word in and out, right? But it says that when he got to reaching the people of Jerusalem, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't understand these things. And so it says from that point forward that he realized there's a deficiency in their understanding. There's, <clears throat> you know, a, a lack of depth in what kind of teaching they can receive. It says he spoke no more unto them unless he used a parable unless he used an example, unless he used simple words, unless he took time to break it down and make sure you understood it. Like one great man of God that I love to listen to and love to model my life and ministry after is uh, Kenneth E. Hagin. See that? Kenneth E. Hagin took years and years and years to talk about one set of scriptures, Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Why? Because it's so important to teach people how to build faith. It's so important to teach people how to trust God. Now you say, Brother Jeremiah, like, what's the whole point of your video here? The whole point of my video is this. What I want you to know is if you've not received something, let me tread lightly here. If you've not received something from a sermon and you're like, man, maybe my heart's just not in it. Um, maybe my faith is just not there. Maybe my belief is just not there. Let, let me help alleviate this for you. It could very well be the fact that it's not been taught in a way that you would understand it. Again, some people, and I'm not going to mention any specific ministers or ministries or anything because I don't do that. But what I'm saying is I've encountered times where there's something I've heard from a ministry 
or a minister. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really great. I hope they delve more into this. And they just don't. They hit on something, they leave it, they expect that you're just going to figure it out. And that that's not the way that ministry is supposed to be. You stick with the thing until you make sure that people understand it and that they've got it. Now, that's my whole goal with this ministry, with Born to Win Ministries. We're going to hammer out the word until we know for sure that you've got it. And it's not because we're better. We just know what our calling is. Our calling, if we're to teach you how to operate in a life where you live victoriously, we have to make sure you break down everything victoriously. So you got to think about this like a coach of a track team. The coach isn't just going to say, okay, you're going to do these hurdles and these relays and you're going to do that. You need to make this time. Goodbye. No, Let, let's break it down. What's your approach? What's your running style? What's your gait like when you run? Uh, what's your current weight like? Do we need to get your weight up? Do we need to get your weight down? Uh, do we need to put you through different exercises? What are you eating? What kind of supplements are you taking? What kind of reps are you doing? What's your mind like? Are you reading books? And there's all these different intricacies that we expect out of coaches and we expect out of teachers and that we expect out of managers and that we expect out of supervisors, but we don't expect them out of the men of God. We don't expect them out of pastors and teachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets, and we should. Because that's the whole thing is, uh, for me personally, I can only speak for me personally, one thing I have thrived on in my life and have learned to love is feedback. Feedback is a form of correction. Now, what does feedback do? It helps you to identify, yes, what you've done wrong or what came up short, but also what you've done well. So you know what to keep doing well. And you know how to, you know, manage and, uh, you know, minister to your handicaps on the things you don't do well. But one thing I promise you, as a minister, as someone who loves you, as a friend of yours, as somebody who's been entrusted by God to teach you the word of God, I want you to know I will never move on from something until I know you've got it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to sit there and be like, well, you know, Barb so-and-so. She's still asking about this. That, that's not what I'm talking about, but you, you can always rest assured with this ministry, any person on this platform, any person that preaches from Born to Win Ministries, we will take time to make sure the word is being given. Because again, I want to reassure some of you because I have this role and real deep in my heart. Some of you out there, again, you've been wrestling with the thought, man, maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't have the faith for this. Maybe I just can't believe for this. Let me alleviate it again. It may not be an issue with your faith or with your belief. It may be a problem with the message that you've heard not being broken down enough for you to be able to consume it. And that's not your fault. What you do from this point, though, is don't get in any bitterness. Don't get mad about it. Just ask the Holy Spirit, you know what, Lord, I feel like something's still hanging up on this. Please show me in your word. Please get me to another minister or another video that I can watch that will help me to break this down so I can understand what you were trying to get to me. So that's the whole thing. And again, that's what that's what I just had on my heart this morning to share with you it is take time to make sure you're being ministered to. But if you're not ministered to, it's not always going to be your fault. The Holy Spirit, ask him. Lord, is my heart closed off to this person? Yes, it is. You need to listen to them. Be willing. That's one thing. But sometimes, and, and again, I'm going to say it one more time, and then I got to get going because I got to go to work. Sometimes the reason you don't receive from a message is the preacher's not taking enough time to tenderize it before throwing it out at you. And I promise, speaking for me personally, that I will never be one to do that. If we camp on a subject or you see me make 900 videos about the same thing, it's not because I don't have anything else to talk about. It's because I want to make sure we get it so we make sure we have it. So we have it in our arsenal and we can absolutely win every challenge that life has by having that word in our back pocket, in our spirits, in our minds, and ultimately in your mouth. Because, And I'll teach you uh, about this at another time that the word's not effective until you speak it. So anyways, I just want to say I love you so much. Don't give in to condemnation. Don't feel stupid. Don't feel dumb. Don't feel like you're less because you're not grabbing something. Because the unfortunate truth is when people get lifted up in their own eyes, they'll love the way that they talk more than the people they talk to. 
and it's unfortunate, but if you do run across somebody like that, don't resent them for it. Just pray for them and say, Lord, Jeremiah 3 says that you're to give me shepherds who are after your heart that will feed us with knowledge. So Lord, whatever is keeping that person from being like that, make them like that. So I just want to say, God bless you. You have an awesome day. Uh, leave a comment, share this video, uh, whoever it'll bless, send it to them. And I just want to declare unto you, have the best day in Jesus name. Bye-bye.